Don't just skip to the Studio Ghibli part. Hey, missile hoes. <laughs> So stupid. Hey, bitches. Someone just forced me to say that from last week's video. I know last week I said I would be doing something special for today's video, and I'm gonna be honest, that's coming next week because it takes a while to make that video. You'll see why in a little bit. You should know by now that I do a lot of artsy stuff on this channel. I paint, I draw, I sculpt. I did photography at some point, and I'm not gonna say like I'm amazing at this stuff. I'm an amateur, I'm learning as I go. And you guys always say, Frederick, stop self deprecating yourself so much. Like, your art is good. And you're right, I shouldn't do that. And I don't do it as much anymore. But here's a secret. I'm not usually proud of my own work. That is not a surprise to any artist, I bet. I always want to improve. I always look at the stuff I make and it's like, it's okay. But it's just okay. I've never been like wowed by my own stuff. So this video has been going on for about a month now. Ever since it got Procreate, I've been trying to draw every day, trying to see how much I can improve. And I just want to compare, like, day one to day 30. A little context for you guys. I don't have any drawing experience. The only art class I remember was like fifth grade. I drew a lot of Pokemon and there was a lot of, oh, let me just print this out and trace over it so I feel good about myself. Not a lot of realism, still life, not that kind of stuff. So starting December 1st, I've drawn every single day. You can see all the little sketches right here. And for some days it was like, oh, over the span of a week, I was able to do all of this. Or it took three days to make this one piece because mind you, I was in college. I'm on break right now. I had other work to do, so I couldn't just prioritize this every single day. And I'm gonna show you the time loss of everything. So let's just get started. And yes, it's digital art. Fight me. The first drawing I did was of myself. I never did like self portraits and I'm not saying this is one because it's not realism. I just didn't like drawing myself. I thought it was hard, but I wanted to start learning how to draw characters in cartoon form because obviously I like cartoons. I like animation. I want to learn how to animate characters. So you have to learn how to draw characters first. So this is me with my eyes closed because I thought drawing regular eyes was way too hard at the time. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, my head is way too big. My legs are skinnier than my arms. I got a giraffe neck. It, it was a sketch. If you zoom in on my face, I like this part of it. This part's cute. And I was pretty content with it because I've once again, never drawn myself like that before. Day two, my friend Ben saw the picture I drew because I sent it to him on Snapchat. And he was like, please, can you draw me? Draw me, draw me, draw me. I love you forever, draw me. Mm, I tried shading. That clearly did not work out. But I started learning how to make a face look more cartoony and still have its features, if that makes sense. His eyes, once again, are eyebrows because I didn't know how to draw eyes at the time. I also put his hands in his pockets because I didn't know how to draw hands. But hey, at least he's not a stick like I drew myself last week, even though his head is still too big. And I don't know why I decided on a Cheeto background. I just like texture brushes on Procreate. The next five days were part of my final project that I had to do. It was supposed to be like a choose your own adventure and I chose to make a character named Bao inspired by the Disney film. And you learn how to make three different types of dumplings. Is it cannibalism? A little bit. I'm not gonna show the clip of me sketching them because there's literally 15 different scenes. But all the scenes in the video I drew. So I felt good about that, except it was Five days of work. So on December 8th, I saw this video on YouTube that said, if you want to learn how to draw better, try these practices first. They told me to draw zebra lines, which is learning how to apply pressure with your pencil. I tried drawing circles to see how good I could get. And I'm just gonna say right now, this one circle I drew, do you see that? That's a beautiful circle. Granted, that is the only good one out of a hundred. So I did circles, lines, swirls, for some reason, <laughs> wavy lines. And I think they help if you do it every single day. Granted, I did this for like three days and gave up. But for my actual drawing for this day, I wanted to draw Pokemon, specifically Banette, my favorite Pokemon ever. Before I would always trace Pokemon because I was like, I'm not gonna sell it. I just want something to look cool on my wall. The tracing didn't get me anywhere. I mean, for anyone who thinks that you learn a lot from it. Yeah, I learned how to trace. I knew how to make smoother lines over my sketches. That That's all I learned. For me, at least, I didn't learn how to create shadow or highlights. And I wanted to get out of that tracing mindset because it's not beneficial in my opinion. It's also very wrong to monetize your traced drawings from another person's art. I just put the little guy on the side for a reference and I was proud of it. If you slow down this video, you're gonna notice that the way I filled in my image is terrible, but no need to correct me. I learned how to do that one week later. But I tried adding shadows and highlights for the first time. And even though these shadows and highlights are the same ones on the actual reference, I understood a little bit more about how lighting should work. So it's been over a week already and I have yet to do any realism. I haven't drawn anyone in real life yet. So I wanted to try that except I cheated a little bit. This is a picture of Caroline using the photo booth filter. And I'm actually very proud of this because I've never been able to 
draw something so that it looks close to the actual thing, even though it's not a real thing. It, it looks close to the image, is my point. And it also counted as a great TikTok. And I only use the paintbrush and blender tool. I'm just gonna say it right now, I hate the blender tool. If anyone wants to teach me how to use that well, go ahead. So the next three days are kind of lazy because it was during other finals. I watched some animation videos on YouTube and I tried to see if I could do their own exercises. So one of them involves turning a square into a circle in a creative way. And this is what they did and I wanted to see if I can do it myself. And no, I didn't just know how to do animation all of a sudden. I was doing it once a week for a whole semester because it was part of my other homework. But it is still very hard to do and I'm slowly learning. These are the best ones I ended up doing before the end of the semester. December 11th, I bought a brush pack and I went ham. That's all I'm gonna say. I've been following this guy on Instagram named Visual Timmy for years now. I just like everything he does, so I wanted to support him, so I brought his brush pack. But yeah, this took like five minutes to do. Don't skip, okay? We're getting to the Studio Ghibli part. December 12th, I saw this on Instagram, I think. I saw it on trending a few hours before drawing this and I just remembered it in my head. It looks cool, but it doesn't excite me at all. But the cloud brush on Procreate is December 13th. Oh boy, this one, I know, took a while. So the sketches look pretty bad, but this was me trying to redesign that character I did at the beginning into a more animation friendly character. Because if I wanted to do animation, I had to create my own character and it had to have simple design. Like I wasn't gonna be able to draw every strand of hair, so I tried designing around and it was really hard, but I really wanted to learn how to do it. So I kept trying. This isn't the final one, I did another one a week later. I also tried to draw mouth poses because I wanted to learn how to lip sync eventually. December 14th, my friend wanted me to design a Christmas card for her, and I remember seeing one on Pinterest a while back, so I grabbed it. December 15th. This is also very lazy and not done well because it took five minutes. It's an arrow hitting a bullseye. How fun. Yeah, I think I was too tired that day. December 16th was actually when I drew all of my Spongebob characters. I'm not gonna explain that because I already made a video about it last week. Oh, and by the way, Squidward is an octopus. I looked it up. So for anyone who doubted my knowledge, fuck you. And December 17th, this isn't done, but I wanted to see like what it would look like if I drew my own thumbnails for videos because that's what animators do and I think it looks cool. I'm not gonna explain the point of this thumbnail because it's coming. December 18th is when I finally, finally created my own character. After almost three weeks of trying to draw myself, I finally settled on one that I liked and for anyone who wants to say I copied another animator, all the references I used are on the page. So I don't want to hear any complaints. But if we're going to analyze how I took inspiration, my face structure is how I have always drawn my face. The eyes are from Adventure Time, the smiles from Pokemon, the glasses are from Wee Bear Bears, and my eyebrows. Let me tell you something about eyebrows. They are so hard to design. You all know. I'm very proud of these. I'm very proud of my eyebrows because I've been doing them for years. So I wanted them to look good on my character, obviously. I don't know how I figured it out, but I like the way they look. So once I start doing animation videos, this is the character that I'll be talking to. And now we get to Studio Ghibli. But before I start this time lapse, let me clarify. No, I didn't trace. This is one of my favorite scenes from Spirited Away. All of their movies have amazing animation. Designs, amazing. Shading? impeccable. So I wanted to look at it and see if I can recreate it because I was hoping it would help me learn a little more on how to shade and work with lighting. Spoiler alert, it did. But yeah, this took, I think, a week to do. This is like the finale of what I was gonna be able to do in a month. As you can see, the reference is right there. In the background, here's a secret. I used the cloud brush to create the trees. But this piece, my character, and then the next piece I'll show you, those were the only ones where I was like, yeah, I'm proud of myself for being able to draw like this. I'm not the person who's so confident about their own work, but for once I was like, be proud of yourself, Frederick, because it looks pretty similar to the actual one. The whole point of this was for me to learn how to look at a reference and be able to replicate it well. Before that, I was terrible at referencing. I didn't understand what this meant, and I'm not trying to brag here. This is me genuinely appreciating my own work for once, because that's what I want to do in 2020. And finally, the last thing I did, I asked you guys what kind of sticker designs do you want on Twitter? These were the ones I came up with. I figured out how to do cartoon hands a little bit, and I think this is the best sunflower I've ever drawn. So be on the lookout for those designs. Actually, that's not the final drawing. Um, this one is just a bunch of sketches that I've been trying to do for 
a video in the future. And I'm burnt out by it because that is like 60 drawings right there. And that's it. That's all I did in one month. If I wanted to recap, um, I'm really happy I did this because I've never drawn that much ever. And it helped me become passionate again about something I've always wanted to do. So if you want to improve, I recommend you do the same thing because art takes time. I'm gonna keep drawing, obviously. I don't put that tablet down ever. And I think this is a good change for next year because that's what I like doing the most. And if I see you guys in the comments saying, I can only draw a stick figure or I can't even draw hands, I can't blank. Anything that says you can't, just practice, please. I said the same things when we're doing this and if I can improve, I'm sure you can. You just have to be driven enough to commit to it. But that's all I have for you guys today. So if you enjoyed, give it a like, leave a comment down below about what art video you want next. Subscribe for more videos every Saturday. And I almost forgot again, but we're going to talk about a coming out story. As always, I keep these anonymous, but they're here to inspire you to come out. In eighth grade, I came out to my mom and she looked at me and said, are you sure? I was thinking that she was probably going to say it's just a face, but then she said, okay, I still accept you for who you are. And now I owe your father $25. That's why she asked, are you sure? And that still makes me laugh, and I'm very grateful for them accepting who I am. I'm actually going to talk about two coming out stories because that one was a little bit short. I went to hang out with my friends one day, and at the end of the day, we went to a Ferris wheel. They told me this is basically a confession time or confrontation time, and I told them I was bi. They were very understanding because they were also, and I hope I get the courage to tell my parents because they're homophobic. And I'm going to say the same thing I already told them three weeks ago. You'll get the courage eventually, but don't pressure yourself because that's not healthy. All right, now I can end. I love you guys and everything is less than three.